Hey folks, um, good morning, good evening. Um, welcome to this webinar session uh, about uh, the path you can take to break into product management. Um, I'm Ankit, uh, so a quick intro of me. Uh, my name is Ankit Shrivastava. I work as a product manager um, in DocuSign. Uh, so I've been in the product field for almost about a decade. I was lucky enough to start off my journey at Microsoft. Um, I first started off in product uh, on a product known as OneNote, which is an Evernote Compete, uh, and then worked in the AI world, so the AI cognitive services world, and then moved on um, and boomeranged out of Microsoft, um, did my own startup in the AI space, and then came back to Microsoft in the analytics space, um, and then you know, joined DocuSign about two years ago. Uh, I, I lead a team in AI space at DocuSign. Um, and yeah, I am super happy to be presenting today in product school. Um, so just a quick overview of what, what are we going to be discussing. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about product management and giving you an overview of the role itself. Um, and then sort of digging into different strategies that you can take to get into uh, product management and become a product management uh, product manager yourself. Um, I'm also going to be digging in a little bit into different strategy, strategies that you can take um, specific to the target level that you want to get into. So if you want to start, um, you know, at a very low level, and if you're, if you're, um, a new grad, uh, what is the best targeted level for you? And what are the strategies that you can take? I'm going to be digging a lot into that. Um, then secondly, I'm also going to be talking about, you know, how do you land that FANG interview? So those big companies, how do you get interviews for them? Uh, any tips and strategies? I'm going to be, you know, sharing all of those as well. So let's, let's get started. Um, let's talk a little bit more about uh, how do you become a product manager? Um, product roles now are very competitive. Uh, they're very fierce. And here's a quick study that I found, um, you know, on, on, on the internet where, um, you know, it shows, it breaks down all of these big tech giant companies and tells us that, you know, about 21% of the employees in these companies are developers, but only 2.7% of them are product managers. So you can see the low percentage of product managers across the board, um, which makes it a very desirable role. Uh, often it is marketed as the mini CEO role, rightfully so. So, you know, um, just like a CEO, you guide product strategy, you, you guide product vision, um, and you work towards driving growth. So growth could mean revenue, it could mean users. Um, and relatively, you know, of course, it has multiple levels, um, you know, all the way from new grads who join in as associate product managers to product managers and then senior and lead product managers, as well as directors of product management. Uh, management. So, of course, with years of experience, you move up um, to these levels. And I'm going to be talking about a bunch of these levels and how do you, you know, transition from one role to any of these levels. So before we do so, I do want to sort of break a few myths and sort of talk a little bit more about what do product managers do. Um, and when you Google this, very often do you find this, this Venn diagram, which says, hey, a product manager is an intersection of user experience, business, and technology. Um, I don't think that's fully true. <laughs> Being in this field for uh, a lot of time, I think like, um, of course, you know, knowing either of these three is a great thing um, or knowing you know, these three areas is a great thing. But at the, at the end of the day, I think what you're really, really responsible for is <clears throat> setting product vision, product roadmap, the strategy behind this product vision, uh, success metrics, which sort of show you whether you've succeeded in where, where you were heading or not, or whatever was your goal. Uh, and then of course, if you're, if you're a manager, managing different product managers, then you know, there are other management tasks that you need to do as well. Your day-to-day -day as a product manager um, you know, looks like the following. You do 
customer studies, you do competitive studies, you do vision setting, um, you're involved in driving your go-to-market strategies. Um, and at the end of the day, you are responsible for driving growth. And again, as I said earlier, growth could mean a lot of things. It could mean growing users. It could mean growing revenues. Um, but, you know, that is how your day-to-day -day is going to look like. You're going to be doing all of these things as well as talking to your customers, as well as setting the right priorities to make sure that the product is heading in the right direction. So if all of that excites you, let's talk about how do you get into product management? Um, is there a linear straight path to get into product management? Unfortunately, no. Uh, I don't think there's a straight path that you can take. You can, you know, go take courses at university and get right into this into this field. Not really. Um, can you get an MBA and would that qualify you to get into product management? I don't think so. Um, I think, of course, if you have a background in user experience in business or technology, yes, it does help for you to move to product. Uh, but you will have to carve your own path to get into this field. Um, so a genuine question, what should you do and how should you craft your own path? So let's let's break this down a little bit. Let's let's dig into this a little bit more. Um, I sort of talked about these levels. Um, I want to dig into strategies that you can take for each of these levels. So of course, at, at, at the very you know bottom is like new grads who want to be associate product managers. Similarly, you know, as a hiring manager, I have seen so many uh, you know consultants, project managers, marketing managers. Uh, trying to make that shift to being a product manager or a senior product manager. Um, I think all of these fields and all of these, you know, folks with large and different skill sets can definitely jump into the field of product management. Um, similarly, I've seen, you know, staff or principal contributors, so principal engineers who want to be product leaders. I've also seen managers who are like managing different engineering uh, teams who want to shift over and now be responsible for driving product strategy. Uh, what do they need to do? What can they do uh, is the question. And I think I, I tried my best to answer and club all of these, these strategies that you can take in, in into a single slide. And I think we're going to be spending most of our time there. So let's jump right into it. Um, for new grads, let's start with the bottom layer. You, you're a new grad, you're coming right out of university. How do you become a product manager? Um, I think for most of these new grads, uh, the best way to become a product manager is take some courses, understand what a product management, uh, what a product product manager does. Um, you know, you can do university courses as well as certifications. But at the end of the day, I think what would really, really help you is product management books. Um, I, I can recommend quite a few, all the way from cracking product management interviews to what it takes to grow a product to articles. Uh, I think there's a lot of content out there for new grads. And I think all of that content is beautiful and you should be reading all of that. Um, I think more importantly, you should be networking. Uh, you should be growing your network of how many product managers do you know? You should understand what they do as well as make sure that, you know, when, when these product managers have uh, have new open roles in their companies, they're referring you to these roles. So I think as a new grad, you, you have a lot of homework to do, uh, and I would certainly encourage you to do so. Uh, I, I think if you need any help, please feel feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I can recommend different courses and different books uh, that you can that you can take and uh, you know do for sure. the The path for the next level becomes a little bit more difficult. Uh, let's say you're a senior senior consultant at one of the big four uh, consulting firms or you're a developer you're a project manager or you are a marketing manager and now you want to shift uh, to the field of product management uh, first i think what you really need to show 
apart from um, you know all your your understanding of product management is your ability to execute. Um, can you actually define product strategies? Can you define uh, what uh, you know what the competitors in this space do? So you need to be an area expert as well as you know a person who can execute on strategies. Um, I've interviewed a lot of consultants who come in and who've never really executed on features or are never really executed on products. Um, they've only defined strategies, which you know is a big strike for them. <laughs> so I think apart from understanding what product management is, you need to be an area expert. You need to be uh, an expert in the field as well as an expert in executing any of these strategies that you define. Best way to do so, best way to show this in your resume is, let's say you start a small business. It could be any business. Um, I, I once uh, had a person um, that I interviewed and we spent a lot of time talking about their vending machine business. Uh, it was very interesting. I think that was a great conversation starter for him. That that was a great conversation starter, which showed that this person had initiated uh, and was interested in commerce. And he was he he had initiated, you know, himself. Um, you know, uh, he he initiated projects and 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 he executed on them. So I think even if you start a small business and you you learn. Uh, from its failures, that is more important than not starting anything. <laughs> so I think uh, that would be my top recommendation for you. Um, similarly, I would say staff and senior are probably on the same band. So uh, you need to you know, thrive as an entrepreneur. You need to thrive that small scale business and scale it up and show that you can scale businesses. Uh, and I think that is what would fit in well with principal or staff band as well. Um, a lot of times we see entrepreneurs who went from, um, you know, a company that was, you know, very small to mid-sized companies and then jump in as principal or staff product managers. Uh, and I think that really shows their capability to understand how businesses work, uh, to hire people, to, uh, to make sure that they understand how competition in that field works. Uh, and I think that those are really brilliant plus points for them. Now, the last level, which is director uh, or M1 and above, as we call them, so managerial roles and above, um, this is very tricky. I, I think out of all of these bands, I think jumping in from director of engineering to director of product is a very, very hard process. Um, I think, of course, you need to, you know, not only understand what product management does and have certification and courses around it, but um, I think, and have referrals. But at the end of the day, what we are really looking for is your ability to, uh, you know, gather a team, work as a team, make sure that the ICs under you are individual contributors under you, uh, you can rally them up to execute on something. Uh, so what we call this as impact uh, you know, showing impact is not impact done by me or I, but impact done as we. Um, and it's fascinating when we interview these people, we are actually looking for the number of times they speak we rather than, than I. <laughs> so I think, you know, their leader, their, their, they, they have leadership interviews where, yes, of course, we want to know what you specifically did, but we also want to know how you gathered people to execute on a mission and what, what changes did you bring in into, uh, you know, the larger picture of the company. So, um, I think director of engineering is the hardest amongst all of them uh, or shifting from director of engineering to director of product. But at the same point of time, I think the best path possible for them is to explore internal, you know, internal openings. Um, I think we, we're going to be talking about this a little bit more, but switching from a director of engineering in Uber to a director of product in Uber would be a, would be an easier path for you rather than going and exploring other businesses because you would automatically understand what is the business of Uber. You would automatically know people inside that can refer you. So I think that would be an easier switch for you for sure. Um, now, we talked a little bit about these strategies. Um, 
I sort of want to change gears. Uh, of course, if you have any questions at any point of time for any of those bands, please do feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I can answer any questions. Um, changing gears a little bit on how, how and what should you do to even land these interviews for product management. Um, I think here's some, here's some very interesting tricks and tips that I've found um, in the last few years of me interviewing. Um, I think first and foremost, if you've not downloaded Blind, I would recommend it. I think people are very, 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 very friendly in terms of you know, finding you the right references, finding you people working in different companies so that you can get a reference. Um, so I think one of the greatest apps that I found useful in, 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 in during the interviewing stage was Blind. Um, of course, you know, if you have a great network, you would know people in different companies. Um, so do have a strong network, do meet a lot of people, do meet a lot of product managers. I think we talked about the second point, which is, you know, internal transfers are great opportunities. And obviously they're better than you looking outside. If you if you're higher up in the love level band, I would highly encourage you to look for internal transfers first. Um and I think the third point here is um, you know, once you start interviewing around, you will understand why this third part is so important. And I'd I'd love to elaborate a little bit more. I think. In this current job market, as well as you know, when it wasn't that that competitive, it was always helpful, um, not just for me, but you know, for people around me. I've noticed this um, to know the hiring manager beforehand. I think you win half the battle just knowing who is hiring and having a conversation with them. Often, I would say in product management, if you throw your resume into a company portal, it's usually most likely a black hole. So I think what you really need to do is find the right people and help connect the dots between the right people in that company to the hiring manager who's hiring in that field. Um, and I think that would be the best thing you can do. And that would be 50% of the battle right there. Um, and once you do have that interview landed and once you have contacted your hiring manager and once you have that referral, uh, I think what is super important for you to do is understand the business in, you know, in and out. I think um, so a quick example, like you should know. Um, so let's say you're interviewing at Uber. You should know, uh, you know, how many sides of this, you know, how many sides are there in this business? There's uh, there's the side of, you know drivers uh you know who actually drive these ubers there's a side of customers who are actually you know taking these these, these rides um and then of course like hey you are the application doing the interaction between these two uh so i think knowing each side and each persona of this business is super important uh similarly i think um, once you do have, you know, your first round, uh, you know, landed and you have your first round locked in, what helps me uh, personally is talking to product managers in that specific field. So, um, again, I'm not publicizing for everyone, any any website or anyone over here, but I think uh, what has really helped me is like going to try Exponent. Um, and finding product managers in that company or product managers in that field that I can interview with. Uh, so if I was interviewing for Uber, I would go find a product manager in DoorDash, or I would go uh, find someone who is willing to, uh, you know, do a one-on-one -on -one quick interview with me for 30 minutes. It could be paid, it could be unpaid, uh, but I was willing to spend in those extra dollars to, you know, go do a quick mock interview session with a product manager in that specific field. I think that really, really helps. It sort of opens your mind into what are they exploring in that field. It opens your mind into different areas that you must have not thought of um, before you talk to this person. Um, so how do you land the big FANG interviews? Um, and I'm going to be writing a bunch of articles about this as well. But I think um, what is, and I've compared only two over here. Um, I think what is interesting to see is like Facebook. Um, and just to give you some context, uh, I actually did crack the Facebook Facebook interview 
earlier and I had an offer from Facebook and I did not take it. I actually used it to match Microsoft's offer, which was very interesting. And I and that's another technique that, that I'll talk a little bit more about offer matching later on in some other session. But I think um, what is very interesting is the larger the company, the more standardized their ways of interviewing are. Um, you can see if if you ever interview for Facebook, uh, they have these three sessions and one or so they have five interviews, uh, two interviews are phone interviews, and then there's, you know, three more interviews, which are on site. But essentially, they're all about these three things, uh, product execution, product sense, leadership and drive. Um, product execution sort of measures uh, the way you look into metrics and the way you look at success of a product. Product sense uh, sort of is a behavioral product, what we call is product um, sort of, sorry, not behavioral, but product sense interview where you're figuring out products and you're sort of uh, understanding customer requirements and then sort of coming up with some sort of certain solutions. Leadership drive is more on the behavioral end. So it, it sort of understands you know, it tries to understand what kind of leader you are, uh, and they're definitely behavioral questions overall. So these are very standard uh, sort of product um, interview settings uh, or interviews, and you would see the same overlaps in Google with one or two more additions. So I think preparing for them means finding certain frameworks for answering questions for each of these areas. So product sense has certain frameworks. You want to make sure that all of these, you know, all of these frameworks, you've practiced all of these frameworks and you become so good that you actually don't even, you know, remember what the framework was, but you just follow these steps. Um, and then each of these steps have nuances, which, you know, make you a good to a great product manager. Uh, and I'm going to be writing a post about this as well. I think uh, what is super important is to, you know, keep practicing enough times to go from a good to a great product manager. And that great product manager would be able to dig in deeper into each of these areas. So, yeah, I think one key point over here is to get your first call, you need a referral. Uh, you need to know someone in Google, you need to know someone in Microsoft, you need to know someone in, at Netflix, um, because the, these company portals are basically just black holes. So if you have your resume and you, you send in your resume, uh, you will not get a call, <laughs> most likely. I think what, what you really need is someone for you to file that with a reference. And don't be shy in you know asking people for filing for references. Uh, I think a good amount of new grads don't really know that if if you know our references succeed as in I referred you and you do get a job I actually get a certain amount of you know money so I think do not be shy at all for asking for references I think it's um it's a great way to get your foot in 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 the door um so just a few few more tips and we can sort of stop here um yeah I think what what is very uh, interesting, and I think when you start practicing for these interviews, you'll notice that, uh, let's say, Product Sense has has a standard framework, but you know, going from a standard framework to a very deep dive in deep dive in framework would require you a month, uh, and I think that's that's all about practicing every day, uh, and I think you know use books, use people, do mock interviews, and, and you'll get better at it. It's not rocket science. Um, and then I think a few more tips around interviewing itself. So generally now, most of these interviews are virtual. Uh, so even if it's an on-site, you can ask your recruiter to space out these interviews. Uh, so have two interviews in one day and three on the other. Uh, and I think that really helps mentally, at least for me, what I've seen is I need those 15 minutes breaks between two interviews to reset myself. Um, and if I have two interviews, I think that's great. I can channel all of my energy into those two interviews. Um, I think after the fourth or the fifth interview, definitely I, I, I am almost ready to give up. So I think space, you know, like spacing it out over certain days or spacing it out over, over days 
definitely helps. And then I think I made this point earlier. Uh, I think large companies have standard set of questions. So at Microsoft, you have certain standards of questions. Of course, you know, an interviewer can bring in their own question. Uh, but most generally, you will find, you know, questions similar to those standard questions online. So what you really need to do is have unique answers, have creative answers, and don't be shy in being creative. Uh, I think what most of these large companies are looking for is how unique can you be in your thought process? And no answer is wrong. Every, you know, in most of these cases where you're, uh, where you're looking into product sense questions and as, as, um, as you, as you go on into your interview, the more creative you are, the better you will be. So trust me, just, you know, think outside the box. And I think the last one that the last point that I sort of added over here, um, and this is with me interviewing people, this is with me interviewing, uh, you know, more and more people, what I've observed now is competition is fierce. Um, and I think you will need to actually ace all of the five or six um, rounds or six interviews that you have. Earlier when, you know, the market wasn't this tough, you could sort of <clears throat> go through the loop and ace five out of the six and you could probably still get an offer. But unfortunately, I think the market has turned quite a lot and you will need to ace all of them. So there will be a little bit of preparation required for you to ace all of these rounds for sure. So yeah, I think we're we're almost at a 30 minute mark. So I do want to talk about offer negotiation, but uh, that's the next session that we're going to have. Uh, I will walk through strategies of, hey, how do you make sure that you have landed more than one offer? And how do you make sure that, uh, you know, once you do have that, uh, what sort of strategies do you use to make sure you're, you're coming in with a higher uh, base or a higher, uh, you know, equity offering? So yeah, I think that's topic for next time. Until then, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, add me, follow me, just throw in questions. I would love to answer them for you. Keep uh, keep a lookout for those articles where I deep dive into you know product sense and product execution and how you should be uh, varying your answers according to the levels that you're targeting. So yeah. Let me know if you have any questions and thank you so much for attending this session. Appreciate it. And hope you have a great day.